Hey, welcome back. We're at the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verses 17 to 19 today. And let's see what we have there. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk, of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. Now, this might be a pretty challenging text for some people. I don't think I've ever heard anybody preach off of this text. Verse 17, Paul says, follow my example. Me, Paul, me, Paul, follow my example. And you have us as a pattern. Now, we don't like this. We don't want to point. Hey, I don't want to point to myself. Do you want to point to yourself? How many of us would say, yeah, follow me around for a month and videotape the whole thing and put it in front of the church and... Let's see if, after they see that if they uh, what they think of us after that. We have a lot of mistakes we make. We have a lot of moments of failure, times where we, we're not very confident of our experience. When you look at this, though, when you look at this, though, don't you realize that our life should be above reproach? We are living in a glass house. The angels of heaven are watching. God, the God of heaven is watching. The church members, the people in the community, my neighbors who aren't Christians are watching. They're listening what sound emanates from my house? Do they see, you know, what do they see? What do they think? What do they hear? What do they think about you? Paul says the leaders of the church should be a pattern. Jesus is the ultimate pattern, no question there. I guess what I'm trying to say is when I look at what Paul says here is, we who are Christians should anticipate and live our life such that we recognize we are, whether we like it or not, whether we feel like people should point to us or not. We're not asking people to point to us, but Paul says here, follow us. And we need to live a life that people could say, hey, my pastor's a godly person. My elder's a godly person. My Sabbath school teacher is truly a Christian person. You ought to meet my Sabbath school teacher. That person is a, is a godly Christian person. We ought to have lives that would stand up to that. We're not saying that you're saved by following uh, my example or Paul's example. Or it's, it's Jesus that we're following. But, but we are also called here to be a pattern. Not be the pattern, but we're called to be a pattern. Christianity has to be uh, transmitted from generation to generation. How is it done? How do you do that? You have to do it with real people in real times, real people wearing real clothes, you know? That's something we need to do. Now, there's a warning here also for us that a lot of people follow their own bellies. A lot of people are enemies of the cross of Christ, and yet they're sitting there in the church all, uh, all religious looking, all religious, and uh, behaving all religiously. Paul says they're, enemy, they're enemies of the cross of Christ. Their God is their belly. They set their mind on earthly things. Just because you're sitting in the pews in the church doesn't mean you're setting a heavenly example. does not mean that you're really advancing toward heaven. You need to take an effort and submit yourself to the Spirit of God and say, God, please, I'm laying aside self by your power. Please, Lord, bring me up higher. Take me up to higher ground. And let's pray about that. Dear Father in heaven, a disturbing text today that our lives should be examples. Our lives should be not the example, but examples of what Christianity is. We're hesitant about that, Lord, but Paul is really challenging us here to really be the real deal. Lord, help us to be the real deal. Help us to be aware that our gods are not our bellies, but our God is Jesus. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. All friend, live it out and love it out. God be with you.